Hello, in this short video we'll be explaining what the terms safety and liveness mean in regard to writing properties. So the code examples we show are for SVA, although they're equally applicable to PSL, the same principles and the same meaning applies. So these kind of terms are mystical terms that you never really see a good explanation of, so here's my attempt to explain what they mean in some kind of practical context. A typical requirement is, especially informal, is to describe something known as eventual activity. So if you have something like this, for example, if I have a request at some future cycle I must see, or some later cycle, shall I say, because we've got next cycle implication, I have a grant, um, then that's the kind of thing that you can't prove in simulation. You, you're never sure in simulation. Uh, if you make a request and then the simulation ends, you know, maybe if you'd have let it run for one more clock, then grant whatever occurred, you'll never know. Uh, but with formal, you can prove forever. That's one of the very main attractions of formal. You can prove this kind of property. So things like, um, you know, grant, arbitration, um, starvation. So if you've got a priority screen in an arbiter, for example, you know, is it possible that some grant never gets made because there's always something else which can take priority over it? The simple explanation of what a, a liveness property is, and, and this represents one, is what we're going to see here. So the, the definition I'm going to give here is a property where at least one way in which you can fail requires you to display an infinite waveform or often you see um, in, in various books and magazines this statement claims that something good happens eventually. Why would we need an infinite length counterexample for this property? Well the, the only way of showing this particular one fail is if we have a request and then we show look grant is false forever. That's the only way of demonstrating that so that's what is meant by an infinite length counterexample. So in simulation, this really doesn't have any meaning because in simulation you can't simulate forever. Or you know, running one more clock may cause the property to pass. You'll never know. However, um, safety properties are really the opposite of this. So they're bound in time. We're not really bound in time necessarily. They're bound by some fixed number of cycles or some event occurring, which can be, you know, an unknown number of cycles in the future. Now, a characteristic of safety properties that makes them different from liveness properties it is that all failures can be demonstrated with a finite length counterexample. So again, an often used description of this is claims nothing bad happens. So let's see an example there. So that the previous example we saw with a request, um, this is you know, f for regarding the explanation of liveness and safety is a bit um, too simplistic because it's just a liveness property and only one way in which you can fail. So what we'll do is, is a slightly more complicated example which really hopefully explains this. So another kind of complication into this is that the system Verilog language reference manual in 2005 did not have any concepts of strong and weak which are topics for another day. Um, so what this means is that um, strong semantics is that if you specify a property like this you're requiring the right hand side to complete otherwise it's a failure you know given that A has occurred at some time you require the entire right hand side to complete otherwise it's a failure that's known as a strong Kind of property and a weak property means you don't require this sequence to complete but it can't be violated which is two different things so I will go on to explain on the waveform diagram really what that means so this particular property holds if and only if either a can never occur so remember with properties with implication uh, if the left hand side never occurs then it can't possibly fail that's why it's important especially in formal that you cover that the left hand side of implication can occur and in fact formal tools Jasper Gold will automatically create that cover for you. However, in if you take the same property, the same literally the same characters typed in, the same file, in the 2009 and 2012 LRMs, which obviously come after 2005, the default semantics are weak. Okay, So you get different behavior, basically. For that given property, you get different behavior depending upon which version of the LRM you compile with, which isn't very uh, helpful. So in the 2009 LRM, the keywords strong and weak and therefore the concepts of strong weak were added. The way in which we can think about this property then is that there's two ways in which this can fail if A occurs. As we've said, it cannot fail if A does never occur. But if A does occur, there's two ways in which this can fail. Either we have C occurring before B, and that's this case here. So A occurs and at some number of cycles later, it's not important how many, but uh, it's bound by the event of C occurring, then that property fails at that cycle where the mouse is now. Um, that's a finite length counterexample, of course. Okay, so that's an example of a liveness property. Uh, one way in which it can fail has to be an infinite length waveform, but all other ways may be finite.
and that's the exa one example of a finite failure. The other way in which it can fail is if A occurs and C stays zero forever, but B never occurs. Okay, so we only know this at infinity, which simulation can't do, but formal can. So here's another counterexample. That that would be the counterexample you see in formal if it was never possible for B to occur, but C did stay low. So whether this second case, whether you observe this case or not, this live seek one fail depends upon whether the evaluation of your property is either strong or weak, i.e. are you using the 2005 LRM or are you using the 2009 or 2012 LRM, which is, to say the uh, least is not very helpful. So these keywords were introduced and the concepts of strong wheat were introduced inside of the 2009 LRM and, and are still present in the 2012 LRM. So what we've done is modify these properties slightly. Uh, we've got two now with different labels and one says strong here and one says weak there. So so what, me, what this means then in terms of what behavior do we see is it no longer depends upon which LRM version we're using. So what I'd recommend you to do is always use strong and weak keywords to indicate what's really intended. This particular case Liveness 1 will fail under both circumstances, both these traces. For this particular one, where we said weak, we're not requiring B to ever occur. So this set of waveforms will not cause the property named safety 1 to fail. Very important point. So the important thing there is for this, this weak means there's no requirement for this sequence to ever terminate, as long as it's not violated. With these kind of liveness properties, you often need something known as fairness assumptions. So the example given here is if we've got a state machine in our design, and let's say there's some signal in it um, occurs, what we want to check is that the FSM should eventually return to idle at some future point. We don't know when, we just know at, at some point it should do. However, we have an input to this state machine called stall. This is an input to our design. Let's say the formal verification tool, because it's an input, is going to decide, based upon any constraints we've got, what value stall has. And if the signal stall is true, the state machine stays in whatever state it's currently in, as you may guess from the signal's name. So all you're going to see if you had this property in formal is the, the tool is just going to hold stall active forever, meaning you, this property fails because it never reaches the state idle. And when you see this kind of counter example, you'll say to yourselves, well, that's not fair. You know, at some point, I must release this stall signal in order that the state machine can make some transitions. So this is why it's called a fairness constraint, and this is its form typically. Um, so what we're saying here is assume property, and then we're given a sequence. We're saying that's that plus symbol means one to an infinite number of cycles. So we're saying at every clock we evaluate this property, there is always a future cycle, i.e. one to an infinite number of cycles later, where not stall is true. Okay, that's true for every cycle. So what this does is prevent the tool, the formal tool, from producing this infinite length counterexample with stall being held low, because it can't do that anymore because of that fairness assumption. Okay, so I hope you found that useful, um, and it's removed the mystery for, of what liveness and, um, and safety means to you, and the importance of strong or weak, which will be the subject of another one of these kind of videos. Thanks for spending the time to watch this, and hopefully we'll see you again at another one of these videos. Mm -hmm.